Hey, in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to smash any shoot in three hours. We're gonna be going through a little masterclass on that, but my first tip is this. If you don't know what problem your video is solving for your client, you don't know the specific reason that they need this video. If it's gonna get more people at their website, if it's get to people to buy their product, then you're gonna be shooting lots of random footage and your edit's gonna go on forever and you're probably gonna have an unhappy client at the end. So the first question you need to be asking your clients when you meet with them is what problem does this video solve? But I'm gonna be using this video we did for Candace K as an example. If you want to see the full video, you can skip to the end of this. I'll put some chapter markers. We shot this video in just over three hours and we're showing you how to do that yourself. So let's get into these tips. This is some deep powder. Just wanted to find a quiet spot here. Oh, cool. Just staying in a chalet on the mountain. This has been pretty fun. <laughs> Falling backwards. And why am I on a mountain and not snowboarding? It's because I was taking a little break. I'm a bit beat up. Can't say I didn't hold the shot. Get away, nature. Like I said, the first thing I did was I got on just a half an hour call with Candace and found out what the biggest problem was for her company. And that was simply that people don't know she does everything handmade, it's bespoke. So that was the whole purpose of the shoot. We had no other goal than to communicate that Candace's work is unique. It's not off a printing press, she does it by hand. That made this shoot really simple. I wasn't confused about what we were trying to shoot and I knew her end goal and if I could achieve that, she would be happy. So my first tip is this, only have three questions when you go into the interview. Don't have a full page because you're gonna feel like you need to go through all of them and then you're gonna have a two hour interview for just a 90 second promo piece for your client, which is ridiculous. You're killing yourself in the edit. Just have three questions. First, what is the gap in the industry that your client is in? In the case of Candace's, everything is printing press. It's all done on computers and it's just rubber stamped wallpaper. This is where Candace comes in. That's your next question. How does your client address that gap in the industry or that problem? In the case of Candace, handmade. It's beautiful work, it comes out of her brain. She's an inspiring artist. And then third, how does the customer become a part of that? How do you get to collaborate as a customer with the client? This is where you invite people in to either buy the product or join this company. In Candace's video, we showed her making all of these different restaurants and showed the end result for the client so people could imagine themselves having Candace work with them. Three questions, don't do anything further. Put my phone down in the snow. See my phone in the snow, literally. That was a bad idea. It gets me so nervous when people tell me they're doing a commercial shoot and they just are hoping it's gonna work out. Just like, get rid of hope. There's always hope. Like, use it in real life, but not on a set. It will kill you. My second point is, simplify your edit by getting a variety of B-roll and shots. This will make your edit so much easier if everything doesn't look the same because footage that looks the same is boring. One quick way to do this is ask the client for footage that they already have. We did this with Candace. We sent her a Dropbox link and she just uploaded a whole bunch of stuff and we used that. Then we got an iPhone on set. I gave it to Kim, our producer, and we put it on VHS mode. So we had a completely different texture. Then we did one simple trick, which I always have, is just shooting two locations. We made sure the interview location was where we were gonna shoot our B-roll so there wasn't time driving to extra places. That's always important is make your interview locations beautiful because then you can shoot B-roll and you can shoot B-roll of the person during the interview, which will also look nice and gives you extra footage to cut to. I know if you're doing a corporate spot, they're gonna shove you in some corner office that's gonna look really ugly and uninspired, but you don't have to settle for that. I will often rent a studio or find a home that has nothing to do with the client, but looks nice for the video and they'll love the end result. I even do this in my documentaries for OK. There was times where we couldn't film in certain people's houses, so we just took them to a studio and it looked great and it looked good in the film. Like these shots right here, they don't live there. You don't know that, but it looks good in the video. So make sure you're not compromising on your interview location and shoot the B-roll there as well and get a variety. Variety is so important for your edit. Make sure that you control the location. Don't let the location control you. So find a good place to shoot. I'm like a pioneer forging through the forest, finding beautiful locations for B-roll. Somehow I'm not falling through. This is like six feet of powder.
Bonus tip two is simplify your actual setup. <laughs> Don't get every light on set that you own. We just use this really big five foot light dome from Aperture. And if you don't have the money for that, get windows. Most buildings have big windows. So we also made sure the studio that we shot at had these giant windows. And when half the time we just pulled the Aperture light out and use that as our key source and point your camera towards the light and most of your B-roll should look much better than if you weren't. So just simplify your setup. Don't worry about using every toy. If you have one big light source, this will make your footage look way better. Keep it simple. Most good films have simple setups. Also too, you might be asking, well, how do I edit this footage quickly? Well, we got you. Our editor, Lewis, put together this video with Candace in I think about two days. And he actually talks about that whole process in our new course, The Perfect Cut. This part of Art of Documentary, Lewis goes into how to organize your footage, how to effectively get through every edit in the quickest amount of time as possible, and make sure you get the best story no matter what footage has been given to you. That'll be releasing very soon and you want to get on the wait list for that. It's part of Art of Documentary. Also too, if you want advice on a shoot coming up for a client, we do these feedback hour calls for our Module 2 students in Art of Documentary. So people bring us their pitches and their ideas they have for a client shoot and we get to give you live feedback on that call about how to effectively approach that shoot. People have been loving the feedback hours and that's complimentary if you're part of module two in Art of Documentary. Doors are opening soon, don't miss out. AOD is simply my favorite thing I've ever got to do in my career. It's been so fun working with all of you guys so up close. Maybe I'll try sitting. Oh, this is actually a really nice shot. I like this with the trees back here. Not really flattering for me. Maybe I'll just like put it down. Oh, that's a cool shot. I like that. Frame myself right in between the trees. Give myself a little more exposure. Beautiful. There's a big time waste on set of once you get there and you start shooting, the client goes, mm, I, I don't really like the way that looks. Can you change this? Here's the tip is before you ever get to set, get some reference videos and make sure you and the client agree upon how this should look and feel in the final edit. Now, I know this is times where the client will show you some $10 million commercial and goes, we want to look like this. And then that's just when you say, okay, that costs this amount of money. So they know that they need to bring their expectations down. But what was so great was Candace and I just texted back and forth and sent each other a couple different videos. So I knew what she was going for. And I even showed her some of my past work that was similar to the aesthetic. So once you've nailed down a look and feel, and it doesn't have to be your video, it can be someone else's, then there is no arguing on set of what it should look like. And if you have a fickle client, someone who's indecisive, my best advice for you is to get them in writing saying, this is the way we would like this to look. Get that confirmation for them. Not so that you can say, hey, I told you so on set, but so that they have to commit to it before you get on set so you don't get that indecisive person going back and forth. That's where a lot of time is wasted. Then you get to the edit and they try to keep changing everything you shot. So my best advice, just get it decided before you get to set. Ugh. Big shout out to my family too. Ah, jeez, got hit by a tree for inviting me out here. My brother and his family try to ski and ski out. It's been pretty cool. We can just ski right up to our chalet. It's been a few years since I've snowboarded, but I love snowboarding. I used to do it a lot. Now I'm an old man, but I'm gonna, oh, geez, that's a big dip. Appreciate you watching this. Leave your comments below if you have any advice for others about how you get through your shoots the quickest. I know there's many people who watch this channel who are really great at their client videos. And I am going to get back on my snowboard now and I'll see you on the next video. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to get across this. That oh, wasn't so bad, kind of anticlimactic. See you guys in the next one. And gals, see you in the next one. Later. Candice K Design was birthed out of a restriction that I saw in the industry. And I fell into wallpaper by fluke because a friend of mine was like, you should do wallpaper collection. And I was like, wallpaper? Like, who wants that? Who does that? Back then, one of a kind did not exist. When I noticed that, I felt like there was this huge hole in the market where no one was taking textile and like grabbing it with his two hands and making it something special. Everybody told me no. And I just really believed that it could be done different. By the end of the process, the client feels like they are one with this print. No one in the world has this print. It really is just like these two things make the print from beginning to end. 
what I get excited most about now is just this added depth of connection to textile that I feel like has never really been talked about or attacked. Now, when anyone takes a photo in front of the artwork, you know that you're a gecko, you know you're a poppy steak, you know you're a cell rose, you know you're a mama, you know you're a planter, you know you're a dream motel. And it's like together we've, we've built this thing that wasn't a thing before.